I used to work at a destination marketing organization, or a DMO. It was my job to promote my destination as the best choice for business and leisure, shopping and sun, indulgence and consumption, you know, all the usual things people travel for. But I wasn't relating to my work. It wasn't making the world a better place, and it wasn't making me a better person. How could I do my part in the world if I was spending over 60 hours a week promoting luxury resorts and boozy brunches to tourists? So during the pandemic, I decided to pursue my master's in Barcelona and study sustainable tourism. I wasn't alone in pivoting my life around my values. During the pandemic, amidst the colossal loss of life and the unstable climate changes, people were really beginning to question their lives. And they were questioning whether their roles or their jobs were playing any role in managing these social and planetary crises of our time. Reports from Booking.com and Expedia Group are also showing that trends are moving amongst travelers as well. People are moving away from tourism as usual and seeking out destinations that were doing more to protect the people and cultures and the natural resources of their cities. I was studying sustainable initiatives and the UN Sustainable Development Goals, or the UN SDGs, which is a framework of 17 interconnected global goals that are intended to lead us to a sustainable future and intended to be achieved by 2030. Because of my background in tourism, I wondered how we could apply the UN SDGs onto DMO work. And luckily for me, a guest speaker in my master's showed me what that could look like. She came from the Global Destination Sustainability Movement, or the GDS movement, and they created an index that measure the sustainability performance of DMOs in alignment with the UN SDGs. So my CV was in her inbox before she could even finish her talk. A few weeks after I graduated, I joined the GDS movement and I had a closer look at the GDS index. So the GDS index is made up of 70 qualitative and quantitative criteria that are spread out across these four categories environmental, social, supplier, and destination management. These four categories are, are built on a set of SDGs. We don't use all the SDGs, all 17 of them, but the combination that we do use ultimately contribute to, towards SDG 11, which is sustainable cities and communities. Our methodology is available online for free for anybody to download. And anyone can use our framework to apply it to their DMO work. However, destinations that take part in the index are agreeing to voluntary have, voluntarily have their progress published online for everyone to see how they are progressing across these four categories. And I think having their progress available publicly really creates a healthy environment for healthy competition. Because most destinations will boast about things like, our cities have the most Michelin star restaurants in the world. But our destinations are bragging about the right things. They're bragging about things like, our conferences use exhibition stalls that are made up of upcycled garbage. So we're starting to see a shift in our clients as well. When I pick through the data of the submissions that they've given to us, I started to see a trend that wasn't part of their submission. These destinations, these top performers, they weren't just using the index as a tool or the UN SDGs as a tool, but they were using every tool that they could lay their hands on and everything within their arsenal to improve their performance across these four categories. Not just because it helps them with their ranking on the index, although that certainly helps, but because in the process of working through these types of questions and seeing the SDGs, it lit a fire inside of them. The marine biologist, Dr. Ayanna Elizabeth Johnson, once said that every job is a climate job. And these people, these marketers, event planners, these um, destination managers, they were realizing that they were turning their jobs into climate jobs. And when they realized that, it made them excited. And being excited about this had motivated them to go above and beyond what we were asking them to do. 
We call these people the passionate volunteers, the green champions of their organizations. And when these organizations let these people shine, their impact multiplies. Our destinations are coming up with programs that are contributing ultimately to these global goals. For example, Thailand had started an initiative to reduce food waste at hotels and venues. And so they trained over 800 hospitality workers to do this, and they saved over 300 tons of food from going to landfill. When Irish destinations realized that there was a low rate of third-party sustainability certification among their suppliers, they strategized and lobbied with their government to raise funding so that their hotels, their restaurants, and their venues, their museums, tour operators could pursue third-party sustainability certification at a discounted or free rate. And Glasgow, who hosted the COP26 last year, they created a network of social impact businesses to be involved in these large conferences and tourism events. They hire people like horticulture therapists who train delegates on how to trim fruit trees and you know, raise seedlings in between conferences and help maintain the green spaces of their city. It's no wonder that Glasgow is called the Dear Green Place in Gaelic. Our top performers are essentially the kind of cities who have the receipts whenever clients or visitors come knocking on their doors and ask them, what are you doing about economic, environmental, and social impacts of tourism and events on your city? By aligning with the UN SDGs and using the index as a framework, these destinations have demonstrative evidence of their sustainability practices and what they're doing to contribute towards the global goals. And we're really happy to see that every year, the averages go up every time these destinations take part. And these top destinations are really transforming the way people do business and leisure in their destinations. This year, we released our results, last week actually, and these are the top 30 destinations on the GDS index. So the next time you hear about an event or you're planning an event yourself, be it a destination wedding or a conference or a concert, ask yourself, like, where do you want to have it? And really think about where you want to have it. Check if the host destinations are using frameworks like the index or the SDGs to measure and demonstrate their sustainability practices. Because that's the best way to get the answer to the question of, how is my event going to make a positive impact on the host city and on my attendees? Ask for the receipts. Ask if the hotels that you're going to book have sustainability credentials. Ask if the workers who are setting up the event are treated and fairly compensated well. And if you don't like the answers to some of these questions, ask the host city, what are you going to do about it? Thank you. Mm -hmm.